Hello everyone, welcome to my classroom. So today we're gonna do a little middle of the year classroom tour. I didn't do one earlier this year and now I'm thinking, well, why not just share? I'm going to just kind of break down for you what is working in the classroom, what I might change next year, and just kind of give you a brief overview. This isn't going to be anything crazy. I'm just going to kind of give you an overview of everything that you will see in the classroom and how we use different materials and different spots in our classroom. And if you have any questions, please comment down below and I'm happy to answer them. Um, if you have any things that you'd like linked, comment down below and I can definitely do that and link them in the description. I'll try and link what I can in the description, but no promises that I will be able to get everything. So like I said, just ask and I will, you shall receive. Yeah, so let's just dive into a little classroom tour and I'm so excited. This is, by the way, if you're new here, my name is Victoria. I am a seventh year, third grade teacher in Maine and a mom to a 16 month old baby boy. And this is my classroom that I have been in for the last six years of teaching. It's well loved. I figured it out pretty well. I really love this space and I hope that you like it too. So let's dive in. Let's dive into looking at my classroom together. So when you first walk in, you'll notice my student Spanish projects that they worked with and are so super special in our classroom. Then you'll see our backboard, which just has different tools and organizational things for my students and myself. Some student decorations, all that. And then you'll get to my desk, which is also the area that I use for small group teaching. And I'm just gonna give you a quick overview so then you see the library, my students book bins, then you get to the front of the room where I do the majority of my teaching, and then you get to the side of the room that I has most of my storage and different spaces. Back to the back of my classroom, you have the tools area that has the zones of regulation and different tools for uh, from our guidance curriculum and our birthdays and then like an organizational space for myself and my students that has the schedule and lunch menus and so on. Then I have a calendar for myself to keep myself on track and keep put kids' birthdays on and so on. And then above and below, you'll notice there are some student decorations like a clock that says you matter and then there are quote posters that we do at the beginning of the year. Then you move on to my desk. Nothing fancy, but a nice horseshoe table and I extend it with an extra student desk. Then on my desk, I always have my hole puncher, my harmonica, my stapler, and my remote for my projector because those are like must-haves. Then I have my rainbow cart where I store all of my different teacher, you know, papers for throughout the day and other things. And then here again is my schedule that I reference regularly. And then you'll notice my teacher toolbox, which I don't have just beautifully labeled like many do, but it's functional and it has a lot of the supplies that I need. I do like this. I've seen it as a lot of like teacher must haves and I don't really feel like this is a must have, but it is nice. It's nice to have, but could you do something similar that's maybe a little less expensive? Yes. So I like it, don't love it. It's good, not great. <laughs> then, um, as I said, these I, in my rainbow cart, I store copies for the week. So that's what I'm showing you here. And then underneath my desk is a nice hodgepodge of books that I need to label and a paper cutter and storage and so on. Then you get to this hanging file folder organizational thing that I use for papers for students to grab. Then I have the stances of learning hung up. And then I have headphones and a laptop cart that is not beautifully organized, but it's there. Then I have my library, which is mostly just organized by fiction. And then I go by author and I use the lessons with laughter. I think that's her name. Um, I use her labels and I love them. 
And then as you get down on my library, I now am at the picture books and biographies. And then I have a section for nonfiction. And then, yeah, that's it. And then you move on to more like indoor recess slash math tools. These do have labels on them, but my students put them back and this is just like a real world. <laughs> Then um, you get down to my mentor texts and books that I have and then tools for the comm corner and a little student artwork and a few calming tools for the comm corner because that's our space for the comm corner. Then at the top of that area, you'd see privacy shields and a turn-in tray and then my students' book bins. This is what they use for like their desk space, basically. We take out the innards of the desks and that's what they use. Then at the top, I have a space for the, our classroom promise. And then I have that really great organizational tool for whiteboards and, and clipboards. And then here are where I put books that I get from the library every week. These are, this is like my spotlight station and I love this. My students like it too. And then this is a space where I put their words for the year of 2023. And then this is just a our best year ever um, workstation. Moving on to the front of the room, you see my file cabinet that just has different student files, paper, and some of my own paper files. Then I have a table for my students to work at, which I love. I had a desk there last year, and I'm so glad that I have that now. Then my bulletin board, my smart board, my stage, my stu student signs, and my whiteboard that I use. Then you get to like the desk that I just put stuff on and some of my cabinet space. I love this cabinet space. It is a great spot. And underneath that, I have bucket chairs that my students love to use and then a lap desk or two. My students honestly don't use those that much. Then this is my like shared supply organization, which I do super love. And I have like an area for colored pencils and then markers and so on. Then I have a drawer for um, utensils and baggies and plates. And then these drawers are like art supplies and science supplies, nothing too fancy but it, there's a system there if you saw my classroom setup videos you know I cleaned a lot of this stuff out it's gotten messy again but I'm sure I'll get back to cleaning it out again at some point again I super love these bucket chairs my students do too then in the big cabinets I have just different various student supplies, papers and construction papers, and then um, folders and labels and markers and extra supplies. You know, a hodgepodge of different stuff, but it all has its place. Then in these cabinets, I have other shared supplies, or not shared supplies, teacher supplies, that end up being shared supplies usually. I'm just like, you know, scissors, highlighters, pens, pencils, all the things. And the same thing with this cabinet. Some Sharpies, some Expo markers, a few extra pencil sharpeners because those get broken very easily. <laughs> and then as you move on, I have more storage. That's the good thing about this classroom. So in this like bulletin board space, I have a lot of different math manipulatives and games and like indoor recess games that I don't have space for in my classroom shelving. So these are the things that we don't use as much. So I put them here for that reason. But I do use them here every now and then. Then on the other side, I have some of my like F&P kits and you know, some other important teacher's tools. I also have some like indoor recess snow pants and stuff like that. Again, all good stuff, but not something that I utilize a lot. So that's why it's behind there. And then you can just see another like desk space 
little table space I have, and then these super cute little posters from Hello Jen Jones, and then a hooray balloon from like the Target dollar spot. And then these are some hand signal signs that I made myself and I love. And then um, on our stage, I just have whiteboard markers and dry erase pockets because we use those a lot. And then felt squares for erasers. And then on our stage, it says the time to be awesome is now. And this is our class setup. I'm blessed with a class of only 12 kids this year. It won't be that way next year, but um, we have some extra positions this year. So with that, we have smaller class sizes. And then I have sit spots on the rug for them to sit on for lessons. And then that's my whiteboard space. And you just get another like little general overview of my area there. I really love this classroom. It feels super homey and happy and I've come to a spot where I feel like I've really figured it out and felt happy and comfortable here. So I hope that you also see the joy and love in it as well. It's amazing. Okay, so that was it. I hope that you enjoyed looking around and seeing our space. And I just love our classroom so much. It's definitely not perfect, but I think with anything you have some give and takes and I've definitely found spaces that I care about and that I want to be kept nice and tidy and spaces where I want them to be kept and then other things that I just kind of let slide and don't care as much about. So. There you go. I hope that if you have any questions, you comment them down below and let me know and I'm happy to chat with you about it. And thank you for just hanging around and seeing our classroom. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more teaching, lifestyle or mom it content from me, then stick around by pressing that subscribe button and hitting that notification bell so you can see whenever I post. And I am so, so thankful that you have watched this video and that you have been here and I hope that you have the best day. Bye everyone.